Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude Running. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive look into a category of shoes which exists in the market right now here, June 2023, and we're talking all things 10 mil to 12 mil heel to toe drop. Now, I've got a few shoes in front of me through here, and you may be asking yourself at home, what is heel to toe drop or what is stack height? And for a little bit more information on that specific conversation, we've got a link in our uh, description below, which we have addressed that um, exact Point. So we talk to you in and around where brands measure their stack height and what heel to toe drop actually means, be it the variance in the forefoot. So as I said, head across to that video to get a broader picture understanding of what it actually is we're talking about. But today's video, we're going to be addressing the 10 to 12 millimeter heel to toe offset profile people that would be considering this category give you a bit of an understanding of why brands are still manufacturing shoes in this space and again answer all those questions we hope that you might have at home so without further ado let's get stuck in okay when are we looking at this category of 10 millimeters and 12 millimeters heel to toe drop well we're talking to majority runners out there who heel strike and to give you some context that's around 70 to 75 percent of the runners out there make contact with the heel first so therefore someone who's taking a little bit of load off of their calf and achilles will probably start this conversation just through here be it your 10 millimeter heel to toe drop from a brooks ghost a mizuno wave rider or your 10 millimeter heel to toe drop from a Saucony triumph and a Brooks Glycerin through here. However, some runners who are looking to take a bit of load off that forefoot, so address the pathology questions we sometimes get downstairs, Hocker Bondi, New Balance Moore, Hocker Clifton, and also the Saucony Endorphin Shift are a handful of shoes that we would introduce to the runner downstairs to take that load off the forefoot. But this runner through here, that's not an issue. We just want to take a bit of stress and load off the lower calf and Achilles. Now, Again, with two shoes here in front of us, there's not a lot of difference, two millimetres, right? So from the heel to the forefoot, actually, some would probably say next to nothing, and that's a fair comment. The Brooks Ghost and the Mizuno Wave Rider, these two shoes could not feel more identical if they tried. If you put a Ghost on your left foot and a Mizuno on your right foot, and when I say identical, I'm more talking to the heel-to-toe offset. Obviously, there's differences in comfort and weight, but the static pitch, heel-to-toe drop, they feel so similar, it's not funny. Coming over to the 10 millimeter heel-to-toe drop, Saucony Triumph and the Brooks uh, Glycerin GTS 23 here, essentially... They do feel different statically because the Saucony's uh, density of foam with their cushioning system being the Power Run uh, PB Plus through here, you'll notice that the shoe itself, you'll sink a little bit more into the midsole. So therefore, it probably feels a little bit more like an 8 millimeter heel to toe drop. That's a good thing because where this shoe has come from, historically, Saucony have not played in anything above 8 millimeters heel to toe drop for best part of a decade plus now and for them to execute a 10 mil offset there was a few people that were quite cautious oh that's a big change for Saucony why are they doing that well they can do it and they can execute it in a way that actually performs like an eight millimeter heel to toe drop and that's exactly what they have achieved with that midsole just dialing back to the heel striker point in conversation where yes 70 to 75 percent of runners do make contact with a heel first that is talking straight to the walking community as well. While Sportitude Running is here and we do exist to cater for you, the running community, we have a significant amount of our customers come through the door who are looking just for a comfortable walking shoe and that is brilliant. We don't care if you're walking, you're jogging, you're plodding, you're sprinting. If you're out there moving, it's fantastic. So for us, when we're having that conversation with walkers, you are making your first point of contact with the ground on your heel first, be it a little bit more central to what runners do be at the lateral point of entry, more centralized through the back half through here. So therefore, a shoe like this, which is your 10 to 12 mil offset, is absolutely ideal for you, a walker, who's looking for a comfortable, lightweight, breathable walking shoe, but doesn't necessarily require a lot of compression on entry, which is what most runners looking for, They're looking for that soft point of entry. So therefore, again, walkers who are coming into our store, this is kind of where we start our conversations and we go from there. Not always do we end up here. Sometimes we do end up in those shoes that um, offer a rocker, so that forefoot pathology, but this is more often than not where we do start our conversations. So thank you for tuning in, guys. That's a brief summary in regards to shoes that play in that 10 mil heel to toe drop and the 12 mil heel to toe drop for the running community out there. And just addressing that fun fact, going back to about 1975, this is where most mileage shoes started. 
Brands were executing shoes in and around that 10 mil heel to toe drop. They hadn't really played around with too much densities of foam back then. It was pretty simple how shoes were made. And then we fast tracked to the 80s. The 90s, brands started to get a bit funky with what they were executing with their midsoles. Nike brought out Air. ASICs went hard with their gel technologies. So they were really playing with regard with that midsole um, compounds and how they produce an optimal outcome, be it cushioning. And they did that on that 10 mil heel to toe drop because that was a pretty safe um, offering for them, the running um, manufacturers out there. Um, again, fast track to where we are today. There is so much more going on. Rocket shoes, carbon plates, carbon rods. There's a lot of a lot of different engineering um, features that are coming into the conversation, but we reverse right back to where it all pretty much started in the mid-70s when the jogging boom hit the world like a storm. So guys, if you've got any questions in and around what we've discussed here, please drop it in the comment section below. I do hope it's been of some value to you, the running community. We do like to help you guys out um, with reference to your shoe selections. It's a vitally important part of your running enjoyment. If you want to know a little bit more about maybe zero to four millimeters or five to nine, we are producing videos in reference to those two categories per se. So we'll have a link in our description below, or if not, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe, hit the red button, stay notified, and you'll find all sorts of fun videos in reference to running shoe selection out there. So guys, until next time, stay safe, be kind to one another, happy running, and we'll see you out the road. Take care.